finally here. It's finally here. This is the new Bandai Proplica Dual Disc, and you might not even have known about its existence. It was a Japan-only exclusive that had to be pre-ordered to even get one. They weren't selling these on shelves. You had to order this in advance. The wrapping alone is gigantic, but we're gonna take a look, explore this, and see what it does. This case is used only for the purposes of protecting the product during shipment. Case may not be exchanged due to damage or discoloration. Huh. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. So it does a lot. And we're going to explore each of these features together. Um, the MSRP on this is pretty high, and you're probably only going to find it at a resale shop. But let's go ahead and crack it open and see how much different from the original dual disc it actually is. Oh my goodness. The moment. Set that aside. And what you're left with beneath all the glitz and glam is, let's see, an instruction manual. And of course, what you want to see is the dual disc. So it's packed really well. And it does come with a couple of things. First off, there's a mountable stand, um, which has that Kaiba Core sleek technology to it. There also appears to be some cards which are not loosely uh, or loosely packed. The cards are actually double-sided and they're based on the sort of action style that started in Zexel Arc 5 and also in the movie The Dark Side of Dimensions. It's mainly to just have something to play with when you pose and they're actually really thick comparatively, but they're really nice. So that'll be good for cosplay, of course. But the real question is, how does it interact with real cards? Well, we're gonna take some of the cards out of the deck box, both in sleeves and without, and test those out. First off, you might notice I've got the normal dual disc in the background. That's just for comparison purposes. The Mattel dual disc is quite the feat. I mean, the fact that they were able to get an affordable dual disc out to kids to play with, to practice with, was great. But you'll notice the cards in here are unsleeved. And many a duelist have nightmares about putting their cards in a dual disc. But what this Mattel dual disc does that the other one will never be able to do is it does transform. So it is really neat that the old school one does whip around just like in the TV show. But what you trade off in transformability, you gain in amazing lights and sounds. I don't know if it comes with batteries or if we're gonna have to put some batteries in here, but let me go ahead and try this out. One of the neatest things is it kind of comes with a grip. The old dual disc does have a grip, but the plastic grip on the bottom really eats into my hands, and I know that from cosplay experience. The new grip on the bottom, first off, it looks so much more like the show. Um, it folds out, opens up, and you can strap that thing right on. And uh, it looks like it has variable adjusting, so if you don't quite fit in, you can loosen the straps, etc. And then it closes over your arm again. I think that snaps in closed, yeah. Also, when you're strapped in, it has, pull this right through, it has a little arm bracer that you can hold just to keep it upright. You can kind of keep your hand around that in just such a way that it looks like you have like a, a full invisible grip on it. Most people won't be able to see that if you position it outright, and there's always Photoshop for sure. But let's take it off so we can kind of get a closer look at some of its newer features, including the sounds, the lights, and everything else that it does. Now, I don't know if the batteries are already in it, so I'm either going to be really excited or really sad. Let's try. Uh-oh, looks like batteries need to be added. All right, now that we've got our batteries in, we flip the dual disc over. We're going to switch it on. There's one of two modes on the back here, an A mode and a B mode. Let's find out what A mode does first. Sounds like lights and sounds. So the first thing you'll notice is that Seto Kaiba has voice action lines for various buttons. Your life points are on the side, and looks like that's your thousands. I think there's a life point flip button, but I don't know. That's the music button. Very awesome. That's 
Incredible. Looks like this one's the thousands, the hundreds, the tens, the one, and I think this one might be the voice lines and just the voice lines. So that's for draw. He actually will say the entire speech. <laughs> Enemy controller. <laughs> Left, right, A, B. Well, that's incredible. That's so much, like, audio is coming from this, too. So let's say you aren't interested in all the lights and sounds. It's cool that it plays a song, but you actually want to duel with it. Well, you can actually place your monster cards face down in defense mode or face up in attack mode, and based on how long you hold the button down, a different sound is made. So that's summoning a monster. Well, technically it should have been vertical, but if I set a card, which I believe you gotta place... There we go. And it works with real cards too. That's not because of some sort of magnetism or whatever with the fake cards that it uses. Here, I'm gonna use Buster Blader, the Dragon Destruction Swordsman, as an example. Totally works with any Yu-Gi-Oh card. And just based on the length of time that it's placed in the slot, you'll get a different sound. So I've inserted my real life deck from YCS Dallas and you'll see that actually the cards fit just fine. They've got a nice little peel grip to them. By the way, if you were wondering, it is Mystic Mind Destiny Board, although this isn't the greatest hand drawing all those parts of the Destiny Board. It's got a lot of neat features, but the main thing is it is a functional dual disc. So when I want to activate Pot of Duality, I can place it in my Spell and Trap Zone just fine, and if for some reason I special summon one of the Destiny Board pieces as a monster card via Dark Sanctuary, I'm able to do that just fine. My favorite part, though, is this dual disc imagines modern play in mind. So... If I flip the dual disc around, you'll see that there's a few slots that the older dual disc never had, which are right here. One of them is a banish from play zone, and the other is for your extra monster zone. The field spell slot works just as follows. You load it up into your field spell zone, just like you would in the anime, and then you can slide that in. Of course, you usually want to leave that out to let your opponent know that you've got that, but if for any reason you're done with that, you can go ahead and just slide it in like this. I'm gonna set it back up on the mount. The way the mount works is it just has a few prongs on it and that's just placed right here. Okay, there we go. And it just kind of balances the dual disc thusly. LCD screen's pretty nice, I will say. And the light point buttons are pretty easy. Oh, three, thousand, and you've got your hundreds over here. Um, what's great about this one is it actually can go all the way to one. If you wanted to cosplay, let's say, Merrick and pay all of your life points but one, that wasn't something you could do on the original dual disc. That's something that's actually completely new to this dual disc, and I'm not sure why that didn't come up, but yeah, it'll let you pay all your life points down to one. Oh, so it looks like the switch over here will flip which way the life points display. So if I switch this way to A mode, it'll face me. But if I want to fight my opponent, switch sides, and it'll face my opponent. So one of my favorite features that I found is if you lose life points, you can actually animate the screen and it's just like the show. And check this out, if you have a game over, Kaiba even dies. That's just incredible. So that's neat. We discovered that if you hold this button down, it'll actually switch the life points without having to reboot the dual disc. That'll give you an opportunity that this is the default mode if it's facing this way, but if you flip the switch, it'll face the other way. It's basically a great way to figure out which way you want it to display, and then you can check the opposite way if you need to show you or your opponent. 
And then as far as the songs go... So really this dual disc is for any kind of fan. Whether you're somebody who hasn't played in a while and just want to come back to Yu-Gi-Oh! Or you're a die-hard original fan and you haven't maybe dueled in a tournament before but you really have a mean cosplay. Or you're a real school Yu-Gi-Oh! fan. Like you actually know the game through and through. You can't wait for Yu-Gi-Oh! 7. You love Link Monsters. You love Pendulums. Every one of these fan bases can benefit from one of these things. I mean it is the premier unit. And not only with the lights and the sounds do you get like great play action, but it's also learned a lot of the different things that they should have done from the beginning, like allow us to use sleeves. So not only does it look as cool as the old disc and kind of like brings back those nice memories, but actually it wasn't until the GX dual disc came out that they allowed cards with sleeves to fit into the slots. So basically they've learned a lot of different lessons while being able to incorporate that on a classic form. And of course, it plays the songs. That's probably my favorite part. But what do you guys think? Is it a new dual disc that you want? Do you want to hunt down one of the old dual discs? Or is there one of the series dual discs that hasn't come out that you're still waiting for? Like one of the ones from Arc 5 or 5Ds or Yuya or maybe an updated version of any of the other characters. That said, leave a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you. You guys have a good one. Take care.